Hello, I'm back again, and uh, yeah, this is like the third time I've had to redo this video because uh, I've made a couple of mistakes, but we shall press on. Um, yeah, keeping with the golf war theme from uh, yesterday's video about the Shamarks, I thought I'd do an interesting video covering the uh, sunglasses the British uh, forces were issued in the first Gulf War. There's not a lot of information out there regarding them, um, which I think is a bit odd. Uh, I've checked the Major Tanner article and I couldn't find anything about the sunglasses and the only information I've got about them is through footage of the time and through photographs that I've seen in books where I've seen them being worn by personnel in the uh, books or in the footage. But from what I can kind of gather is a timeline of when they were issued out is sometime between late 1990, so post-October, and early January of 91, and the reason why I think that is the case is because I've seen pictures of soldiers wearing them in the build-up towards the ground assault, and I've also seen photographs of soldiers with them after the ground assault. I've got here two variants of the sunglasses, and I believe they're by two different manufacturers, but I can't confirm that. I just think it is, and I'm going to go with the reasons why I think they are by two different manufacturers. Um, the size dimensions for the sunglasses uh, across are approximately 5.5 inches and they have a removable plastic uh, a removable plastic kind of guard that goes around each side. These two that I've got here at the moment they don't have the plastic guards and the reason is because I bought them from a golf or veteran and when they sold them to me um, he didn't have the guards for them so he must have removed them at some stage whenever. Um, if I haven't already mentioned, it's unknown if everybody got these sunglasses, uh, if at all, because there's probably two factors at play. The first being the logistics issue, and that meaning that not everyone got sunglasses, very much like the desert boots or desert uniforms. Um, sunglasses were probably most likely lower down on the priority list, so the, obviously the higher priority would be to get a desert uniform than it would be to get issued a pair of sunglasses. And the second factor, most likely troops didn't actually wear them, if at all. I have seen some troops wearing the, the sunglasses, but I've also seen some that just buy their own. So it could have been one of those things that you know, troops got issued them, then they just chucked them away or decided not to wear them because they've got their own sunglasses, very much like the Shamargs, as I mentioned in the video yesterday. So I'm going to go over the sunglasses now. They're a completely plastic construction. And it's kind of got this sort of a uh, mock tortoise shell. I believe it's tortoise shell. You can see it's starting to peel away. It's uh, it's uh, been applied onto the actual plastic frame itself, and it's worn away on this side. Even the um, the lenses are plastic as well, and they're yellowed. I believe this was done to um, help help kind of uh, with the glare and sunlight out in the desert. Um, there's no manufacturer markings at all on this particular pair. I've actually worn this particular pair at one stage. You can see there's no markings on it at all. Um, they're both, at least this particular pair and this one, are the same sort of design. I'll take it out of the bag. And they're marked up Unispec 6000 series safety spectacles. Um, Unispec seems to be a company that produces the kind of like safety goggles and um, safety glasses that you kind of wear in a laboratory. Um, or in like I say, a science lab and uh, high schools and, and whatever, like the kind of like the safety eyewear that you'd, you'd get, uh, industrial ones. And it has how to uh, take care of the sunglasses the spectacles, as it says here. Um, the bag's quite damaged because they are old. And then you've got this uh, British standard marking on the back with the regulation of 1974. I'll take it out of the bag now and show you what they look like. So you can see they're basically both identical in terms of the uh, actual coloration and design. As you can see, there's not really um, any difference, really. So this one's in better condition. The only difference I could spot uh, is that this one actually has the uh, British standard marking on the inside. Whereas the other ones didn't. Well, at least they could have potentially worn off of this pair. 
but I don't see any. Uh, I don't see any remnants of the marking on on the inside there. It might just be that white little dot, but I don't think it is. But yeah, and the second variation I'd want to go over is the ones in the hard cases. These seem to be a little bit more harder to find and not as common. I see many of the ones in the plastic cases, the plastic bags, than I do the ones in the hard shells. Um, but yeah, I'll show you that now. So yeah, um, here's the case itself. There's no markings on it at all. It's got a sort of a felt liner on the inside and softer brown felt. No markings on the top or on the case at all. I don't know what this uh, this cutout piece was for. It could have possibly been for a label, so you know who it belongs to. Yep, that's the case. And the sunglasses themselves, as you can see, are a slightly different shade of brown. The tinting is also slightly different. I'll get the other pair out now to show you the difference. Uh, it's hard to kind of show on camera, but in person, the shading is slightly lighter on this pair than it is on the ones on top. And you can see the, the, the actual kind of lacquer is slightly different as well. This is a dark brown, this is a lighter, almost near orange brown, uh, orange brown in uh, natural lighting. And you can see it's got the plastic guards as well. I believe this was to um, prevent dust from getting in your eyes. I'm not going to try and remove them because I don't want to break the sunglasses and uh, I don't know how actually because you can't really slide them off because it's got this uh, sort of um, ridge uh, area here so I don't really want to slide them off and break the plastic sides. Uh, you can see it's got the... Uh, I'll try and zoom in. Yeah, so as you can see it's got the, um, it's got the British Standard markings on it. And uh, it's also got PUL safe, I don't know what that is, and 3429, which is quite interesting. I think these are made by a different manufacturer because it's also got not only the markings there, but it's also got it. It's also got it on the actual lens itself, the other two don't have it. So maybe it could have been that this is a, an earlier production uh, of the sunglasses, it could have been that it's from a different manufacturer. It's it's quite hard to tell, so I'm just going to wrap the video up now. Yeah, so I thought that'd just be a, an interesting video. Sorry if I rambled on a little bit there, because uh, uh, I didn't really have a lot of information to kind of go on this. If it decides to uh, change and I do have more information, I will update the video or probably just redo this at some point. I'll include some video links, possibly if I can find them, to uh, parts of videos which have the sunglasses on them. Um, I believe the NH6 Golfer Ones uh, channel has loads of archived footage from news, uh, uh, news stories and bulletins and stuff like that, which uh, will have uh, British forces in the Gulf and probably at least one of them will have at least one video that has the sunglasses on them. So I might decide to spend some time going through them and maybe include links to that. I'll include some page links and references to maybe articles, photos and uh, books that I've seen them in as well and uh, page numbers for those books. So yeah, um, I'm not gonna really go over prices for these sunglasses because it's kind of hard to determine how much they they go for. Usually when I've seen them come up for sale, they don't go for a lot of money, but obviously that changes with the rarity of the uh, item and as Golf One sunglasses aren't too common, who knows really. Um, so yeah. Thought this would be an interesting video, so I'm just going to wrap this up now, and hopefully I'll get some more content out uh, at some time during this week, hopefully.